All right, so let's talk about America. Uh, because, God, I mean, the number of people out there, the number of people out there who claim to be, uh, you know, claim to be pro-America, pro-freedom, uh, the number of people on the right, on what's called the right, whether that is, um, uh, you know, whether that is the conservative right, uh, or whether that is the libertarian right, particularly the paleo libertarians or the or the Mises caucus or however you want to call it. I mean, it, it just is astounding that whenever there is a challenge on an international scale, whenever some bad actor goes out there in the world and does something horrible, really, I mean, really horrible, um, whether those actors are Muslims, like in 9-11, or whether those actors are Russians, uh, like today, I wonder, I wonder though, what would they would do if the bad actor was China? I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's hard to tell exactly what motivates uh, this attitude. So, so I, I, I wonder, um, I, you know, I wonder what they would actually do. Um, so. Um, You know, 9-11, we start with 9-11. 9-11 happened, and the immediate response of the Ron Pauls of the world and many of the uh, uh, libertarian, anarchist kind of wing of the libertarian movement was, we asked for it. It was America's fault. Uh, we've been intervening in, um, in, in the Middle East forever. We've been interfering in Muslim lives. I mean, they were... The, the, these are peaceful people. These are these are wonderful, friendly people. They are. This is me embellishing a little bit. They uh, they just want to live their lives. They 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 have different ideas than us. But who are we to judge other people's ideas? I remember these. Uh, the, the, this portion of the libertarian movement is dedicated to moral and epistemological subjectivism. Um, and you know they. The, the reason they engage in violence, really the only reason they engage in violence against us is because we keep pissing them off. We keep interfering in their business. We put troops in Saudi Arabia. Uh, you know, we just, we just, we go to places where we don't belong and we just upset them. And, and the same is true, this was after 9-11, but the same is true of any Iranian hostility towards the United States, any Iranian uh, I mean, the Scott Horton, I think his name is, uh, who is now the guru when it comes to foreign policy. I mean, he is the, the god of foreign policy for, for the libertarians. Um, oh, no, Iran is a peaceful country. They, they you know, they're, they're, they're part of the, part of the uh, Judo-Christian Islamic tradition. They just want to live their lives and uh, we keep interfering and we keep, uh, we keep doing this stuff. We... We killed, uh, you know, we didn't kill, we, dep we helped depose their prime minister in 1950-something, I forget the exact date. Um, and uh, we helped the Shah of Iran come to power, and the Shah of Iran was this brutal guy. He happened to have been secular, but he was a pretty brutal guy. Um, and, uh, and therefore, they, the Iranians hate our guts. They hate our guts really because, um, you know, because of... Uh, of uh, American intervention and American interference. I mean, indeed, uh, Ron Paul recently, I mean, over the last few years, has been saying that the reason Venezuela is such a basket case, look, Chavez wasn't a bad guy. Maduro is not a bad guy. You know, the fact that the socialists, it's OK that the socialists, it's OK to have socialism over there. There's nothing wrong with socialism. If people choose socialism, who are you to tell them socialism is no good? That is so authoritarian. I mean, it's really authoritarian of you to say freedom is better than slavery. Um, it's authoritarian for you to say capitalism is better than socialism, freedom, free markets are better than anything else. So, I mean, this is the reason Venezuela is so poor has nothing to do with their socialism. Ultimately, it has to do with uh, American sanctions and American interference and American attempts to destabilize the country. I mean, just go and look at Ron Paul's website. 
And you can find all this. I mean, this is Venezuela. So he defends Venezuela. Scott Horton and the rest of them defend Iran. I mean, it is no accident that you hear almost nothing about the amazing uh, uh, f uh, girl-led, girl as in high school and, 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 and young women in college. I mean, uh, women who are in their 20s and in their teens are rebelling in Iran right now against the mullah. They're taking off their scarves, they're taking off the hijab, the, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and they're declaring, they're demanding, they're demanding the, the, the replacement of this regime. They're demanding that the mullahs go away. You would think, you would think that this would be all over the place among libertarians, that this would be, wow, here are, here are young women fighting for their liberty, fighting for their freedom, fighting to, against oppression. But, you know, I, my guess is a lot of, a lot of these people think that uh, this is all, they agree with Khamenei, the supreme, supreme leader. This is the, this is the regime. People like Scott Horton want to defend. Uh, the supreme leader of Iran, they probably agree with this. Uh, this is a country that has a supreme leader. They probably agree with the supreme leader of Iran that this is all just an American scheme to undermine legitimate Iranian interests. It's all to undermine Iranian sovereignty. These young girls are just paid agents of the CIA. That's the Iranian line, and I have a feeling that there are people in the United States who um, support that line, support that line. And of and of course, you know, so we've covered Venezuela, we've covered uh, Iran, we, uh, we've covered Saudi Arabia in 9-11, um, and then of course there's Russia. And, it, 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 you know, it's, it's, this is not Russia's fault. They're just trying to defend themselves. This is all just a provocation of the United States. We have... Uh, ambitions to establish an empire. Um, those ambitions entail taking over all of Eastern Europe. And uh, so we have foisted NATO onto Eastern Europe. And as a consequence, the Russians seem, uh, the Russians are defensive because they are convinced that uh, NATO is going to launch a war against them. It, all that's happened in Ukraine is this is just a self-defense preemptive strike by the Russians uh, in order to protect themselves against evil NATO, which is known to have ambitions uh, for taking over, uh, you know, countries and, and, uh, and, and, and trying to assimilate them into the American empire. That's the story. That's the story you hear from uh, conservatives, from uh, Noam Chomsky, from the, 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 the nutty left, and from the Mises Caucus and the nutty libertarians. This is indeed the story that almost everybody who despises America and despises anything that America does in the world ha has, it promotes and, and ha have, have embraced. So is there any validity to this story? One of the things that this story relies on, and that really all of this foreign policy nonsense relies on, is uh, the theory of multiculturalism. Multiculturalism as in the leftist theory of multiculturalism. Multiculturalism is the claim that all cultures are equal. That there's no difference between America, between Venezuela, between Iran, between Saudi Arabia, between Russia, between Al Qaeda and ISIS. They're all cultures. They're all people making choices. There's no difference between North Korea 
and South Korea, North Vietnam, and South Vietnam. Yeah, it's, if it's the will of the people, they're all equal. You can't rank culture. You can't approve of some and disapprove of others. And you can't suddenly, God forbid, promote one over the other. This is a, a, a theory that has been promoted by the left, but it has advocates on the right, on the subjectivist right. If you hold subjectivism, then who are you or who is anybody, who is anybody to decide what is right or wrong, better, worse, superior, inferior, what, by what standard? There is no standard the subjectivist would tell us. America, this is, has violated rights throughout its entire history. You know, the left was emphasized, the left will emphasize slavery, colonialism, and, the, and, and Jim Crow laws and racism. The right, particularly the libertarian right, will emphasize taxes. They hate the Civil War, of course. The right will emphasize the welfare state, particularly, again, the libertarian right. They will emphasize state intervention in the economy, subsidies, bailouts of banks, and on and on and on. And in that, again, the left and right are not that different. And in that sense, they will say, look, America is statist. America, the government uses coercion, uses force against its citizens. So does the Iranian regime. So does the Venezuelan regime. So does the Russian regime. All of them are equal. And indeed, if all of them are equal, then the one we have to suppress, the one we have to put down the most, and this is certainly true of the left, and it turns out now that it's equally true of, I don't know, call it the paleo right or call it whatever, whatever kind of right you want, libertarians and conservatives, what we really need to do is suppress the culture that is most powerful, the culture that is most successful, the culture that has done the most, the better, human life, and that is the American culture. That is, in the end, any egalitarian view of anything means chopping down the able, chopping down the best, pulling down and knocking down and hating and despising the best. And that is America. Because in order to make all cultures seem equal, in order to make all cultures seem equal, you have to you have to take the best culture and make it seem really, really bad so that it equates with all the others. So Putin is the same as Biden, is the same as the supreme leader of Iran, is the same as Maduro uh, in, in Venezuela, is the same as whoever. Pick. It's interesting, I haven't seen much about China from these people, although I, I suspect there's a deep hatred and resentment of China as well. So, is it all true? Is America uh, the same? Is America as bad? Is America worse? I just hid Matt T. Cat from the chat. It's just distracting. It doesn't add any value. He's obnoxious um, and, uh, you know, and rude and um, dishonest. And there's just no point. So uh, I hope you guys appreciate the fact that you don't have to read his nonsense anymore. I, you know, I'm pretty tolerant for these guys, but there's a limit. And then yesterday, his racist stuff was just, Disgusting. So, anyway, done. He's gone, at least for today. I don't know if hiding the user from the channel is forever or just for today. I'm not sure. Um, yes, good riddance, I think, is right. So, is America the same as everything? What, what, what would you use as the principle to guide this? So, I mean, in my view, and I think you know this, America is the greatest country in, a, in human history. 
America was founded on fundamentally the right principles by which a, gov a, a country should be governed. I am not an anarchist. I believe government is not a necessary evil, but a necessary good. It is necessary for capitalism. There is no such thing as anarcho-capitalism. Capitalism requires government. It requires an a, a entity that holds a monopoly over the use of force, over the use of retaliatory force in protection of property rights. It requires some monopoly on a particular geographic area that protects property rights. And the reality is that as bad as America is and as bad as America has been, no other country in human history has come close in protecting individual rights to what America has done. Certainly, none of the countries that these libertarians seem so eager to, to, to defend, Russia, Iran, Venezuela. It is interesting why they hate China so much and yet they love all these other countries. I have to think about that. The founding principles of this country are the right founding principles. They were not applied consistently from the beginning. They were not fully understood even by the founders from the beginning. But they are the right principles. The idea of individual rights, the idea of inalienable rights, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are right. I mean, I would have added property, but once you get the right to life, property is obvious. And liberty and pursuit of happiness, obviously, in a sense, is only one right, which is the right to life, as Ayn Rand articulated. So they got it right in the beginning. And as a consequence, in spite of the fact that they were never consistent about it, they never applied it consistently, in spite of the fact that from the beginning, the American government violated rights this country was the freest country in human history, in spite of its racism, in spite of the slavery, in spite of the Jim Crow laws, in spite of taxes, in spite of regulations, in spite of the crazy banking regulations that existed in America really from the beginning. In spite of all of that, there was less of that horror than in other places. And yes, you could argue if it's not perfect, it's evil, but that would be absurd. And if the standard is human life, if the standard is human prosperity, if the standard is human flourishing, God, look what's happened over the last 250 years. And shouldn't we, by that standard, look at those places that have facilitated that flourishing and celebrate those places and make, want to make them better, want to improve them, want to recreate what made it possible for them to achieve this flourishing. But fundamentally, shouldn't we be focusing on the things that made it flourish while condemning the things that doesn't, evaluating the country based on both, not just based on the bad? And this country, this country has been, in its history, overwhelmingly good. overwhelmingly good. And as such, should be celebrated. And again, overwhelmingly good, not only when Republicans win power, not only when this party or that party, it has nothing to do with that. The principles on which it's based were good. And it deviates from them all the time but the principles are there. So even today, we are not as economically free as we once were, and that is a tragedy. We're not even economically free as we were 30 years ago based on the Economic Freedom Index, and there are countries in the world that are more economically free than the United States. But it's not Russia, and it's not Iran, and it's not Venezuela. So at least in comparison to those countries, we should be celebrating America and condemning them. But economic freedom is only not the only type of freedom. We have in this country free speech. 
we're one of the few countries in the world where you really do have free speech, where your First Amendment rights are protected. They're being chipped away at in all kinds of directions, yes, but still, we don't shut down TV stations we don't like, although they do want to regulate Twitter and Facebook because they don't like them. We don't put people who say things we don't like in jail. As compared to Venezuela, Iran, and Russia, we're a bastion of free speech. A bastion of free speech. Not moderately, huge. So, if you're gay, how many countries in the world respect your right to have whatever sexual preference you want? I mean, this is new in America, but in Russia, God, you do not want to be gay in Russia. You do not want to be gay, believe me, in Iran. In Iran, you just get hung. And you probably don't want to be gay in Venezuela. Or even in China. I mean, our sexual freedoms? Now, we're backtracking on abortion, which is tragic and horrific and sad and bad, and we should fight it. But overall, our social liberties, if you will, uh, we're probably better protected today than we were 50, 60 years ago. Certainly, if you're black or gay or of any kind of minority. So, yeah, America is not perfect. It's far from perfect. And the government in America is doing horrible things, primarily to Americans. And we should condemn it, and we should, uh, we should fight it, and we should educate people about how America can be dramatically better. But we still don't have, we don't have political prisoners in, in America. We don't kill our political opponents. And, and by the way, when it happens, for example, in Russia, it's not hidden. When Putin tries to kill one of his political opponents, it's not like it's a secret. It's just accepted. Now, just that would put Russia in a different category than the United States. A different category. There's a category of countries where you don't kill your political opponents and a category of countries where you do kill your political opponents. And those are essentially different countries. So what is being defended here? Why do we care about Russia? Yes, they have nukes, but short of nukes, why do we care? What is good about Russia? In what way is Russia our ally? In what way is Russia part of Western civilization? No respect for the individual, no economic freedoms, no social freedoms, no political freedoms, what is it about them the Western? They're white-skinned? Is that it? Is that what makes them Western? Is that what makes Putin an ally? Or is it maybe that they hate the left? I think for Jordan Peterson, that's what makes it. it. They hate the left. They look like us, and they hate the left. Ally, Western civilization, they must be the good guys. Uh, poison your political advocate, advocate, uh, you know, uh, opponents, who cares? Uh, uh, put people in jail for speaking up. Who cares? Regulate and control the entire economy. Who cares? A president who has siphoned off hundreds of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars into private bank accounts in Switzerland. Who the hell cares? They hate the left. We love them. Indeed, the Iranians hate the left even more than the Russians, if that is possible. Yeah. I mean, the Iranians want to put women in their place. They want to keep women at home. They want to keep women covered up only for their husbands. God forbid you have sex or you even look at a woman who's not your wife. They know the place 
They know how to take care of their women, right? Gotta admire those Iranians. They hate the left. Can you imagine? Can you imagine having a discussion about transgender in Iran? You know, they hang people in Iran from, from construction cranes. That's what they do to trans people in Iran. They hate the left. This is good. And Venezuela, well, I don't know. Do they hate the left? They just hate America, and that's good enough. It's good enough. It's stunning. I mean, in the world in which we live, there's like a handful, maybe two handfuls of countries that you can say good countries, and the rest are garbage. Not the rest. I mean, and then there's a group of countries maybe that are kind of, eh, still struggling to figure out if they belong to the good group or the bad group, but they're, they're struggling. They're, they're, they're in this middle. Maybe that's the vast number of countries. They still don't know. And then there's a group of countries that are clearly evil. They clearly promote evil ideals, evil values, that are clearly anti-everything we represent in the West, clearly antagonistic to human reason, human individualism, individualism. clearly, clearly anti-freedom. And yes, you'd have to include Venezuela, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Russia in that group. But no, Russia's the victim. The United States is the real bad guys. What does that tell you about these people? What does that tell you about these people? Oh, wants me to list them. Sure, America, the United States, most of Western Europe, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan. Those are the better countries. I mean, any thinking person knows the list. And by the way, it's an easy list to tell. It's an easy list to figure out because all you need to look at is immigration flows. What are the countries people want to go to? What are the countries people want to escape from? We want to go to America. We want to go to the UK. We even want to go to France and Italy. God knows why, but we even want to go to France and Italy. Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Germany, New Zealand and Australia. Yeah, sure, New Zealand and Australia are on that list. Again, flawed, certainly during COVID, super flawed, primarily because they learned everything and how to deal with COVID from China. But immigrants want to go there. And where do immigrants want to leave? Well, hundreds of thousands of Russia, Russians have left Russia. And if you open up the borders to the United States, they'd all come here. And, and then there's a bunch of countries kind of in the middle, you know, probably Mexico, most of Latin America, that are still wavering between these two. But look, Cuba is on the bad side. People want to leave Cuba and come to America. I mean, just look at immigration flows and you can tell which are the good countries and which are the bad countries. But no, if you're a good libertarian, big L libertarian, you got to condemn America. It's always America's fault. And look, America makes stupid mistakes out there, primarily because it doesn't actually declare what it's fighting for. So, yes, America deposed the prime minister of, um, of Iran in the early 1950s. Why? Why? Well, basically because Iran was stealing, confiscating, nationalizing oil assets of the West. Now, they landed up letting the Shah do it anyway. So again, inconsistency, hiding the true motivation, not asserting itself, not declaring its true, its true goals. But yes, America should have defended the property rights, its property rights its company's property rights, its citizens' property rights in places like Iran and Saudi Arabia. And the fact that they didn't, we're paying for it today. 
with the power we've handed over to OPEC, which, by the way, cut 2 million barrels of, of oil today from production in, uh, you know, in, in siding with the Russians to drive oil prices up. So yeah, the US does terrible things, usually because they're appeasing. So we protected the royal family of Saudi Arabia forever, instead of asserting our claim on that oil that was owned by French, British, and American oil companies. We forced the French and the British to vacate the Suez Canal when their companies owned it, and Nasser nationalized it illegally, immorally. We let the Iranians take our embassy and did nothing about it. We let them kill Americans and did nothing about it. We let them threaten Americans and did not. Yes, so America's wrong in its foreign policy because it's been so weak. And at the same time, we've subsidized the rest of the world. We protected Europe and we protected Asia. How awful of us. I mean, this is, this is the thanks we get. I mean, the fact is that it is the American, quote, world order, if you will. The fact that America has protected the sea lanes since World War II till today. The fact that America has provided a nuclear umbrella over Europe and much of Eastern Asia that has created some of the greatest prosperity in all of human history. That's brought more people out of poverty than in a lot of human history that has facilitated the growth in international trade, the growth in wealth all over the world on a scale nobody could have imagined. And you could argue whether American resources should be deployed in this way or not, whether it was just to American citizens to deploy them in this way. But in terms of benefiting the world, we've been a massive benefit to the world. A massive benefit to the world. NATO. Is it really American imperialism that is driving the expansion of NATO? Really? I mean, if you go to Poland, do they feel like they're under the thumb of the Americans? If you go to Romania, if you go to Bulgaria, if you go to these countries, do they really tell you, oh my God, these Americans, these American colonizers, they whip us three times a day. Why has NATO expanded into Eastern Europe? Because the Eastern Europeans demanded it. It's because the Eastern Europeans felt unsafe. And because the Eastern Europeans wanted an American subsidy. They wanted America to subsidize their defense. They wanted America to subsidize and provide them with the nuclear umbrella. They wanted America to fight to save them from the Russians. Now, you could argue that's bad for America, but it's not bad for Eastern Europe. And why shouldn't Poland, fearing Russian aggression, want to sign a treaty with its neighbors to protect itself? How is that imperialism? How is that bad? Why shouldn't Ukraine, a sovereign country, recognized even by Russia, indeed, created, arguably, with the fall of the Soviet Union by a popular referendum sanctioned by Russia? Why is it not the right of the Ukrainians to engage as a sovereign country in a defensive treaty with whoever they want. Oh, no, 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 no. The Russians will be offended. The Russians, the beacon of civilization, the beacon of freedom, the beacon of liberty, the, 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 the libertarian Mecca, they might be offended. We can't do, we can't offend the Russians. So it, 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 it truly is stunning. I mean, this, is, this goes back to, to Rothbard's perversion of the libertarian movement. It goes back to, to Rothbard chewing the North Vietnamese on, even though they were communists. You'd think the opposite of libertarians. They were communists. But he was chewing them on. How dare the United States try to preserve freedom in South Vietnam? Now, Ayn Rand objected to the war, but Ayn Rand objected to the war 
not because how dare the United States preserve freedom in South Vietnam, but that it wasn't in American interest to sacrifice its young kids for the sake of South Vietnamese. But she was for South Vietnam. She was for fighting communism. She was for a country defending itself against communism. Rothbard's view was, well, it's the will of the people. Communism is the will of the people. Cool. So be it. Just go look online at all the libertarians defending Putin. All the libertarians defending Russia and blaming the United States for all the problems in the world. Go look at Ron Paul's website. Go look at Dave whatever, comedian Dave. Go look at what the libertarian movement is really like. So go now. Don't go to... Go to Go to, uh, uh, you know, yeah, Rothbard's been dead a long time, so go to Ron Paul's website. Go to, go watch the interviews by a bunch of libertarians. Go, go look at, uh, what's his name, uh, 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 at antiwar.com, you know, which is a libertarian website supported by uh, Noam Chomsky. No, I'm not going to debate any of these people. Anybody associated with antiwar.com, I will not debate. So, in this kind of nihilistic, subjectivist view of international relationships is, is, is despicable. Yeah, I mean, I know libertarians in Russia. I know libertarians in Russia. The, the, the better ones are the ones who land up in jail. The better ones are out there protesting the war. They're not saying, oh, Russia has a right because NATO is... I mean, maybe some are the ones inspired by Rothbard. Maybe it's a small minority of libertarians, but it's the libertarians that are running the libertarian party and the libertarians that are representing the libertarian movement these days. And, you know, maybe it's only a small group. Good. You know, I, you know but... Uh, you know, there's, there's a number of people at Cato that I suspect are probably like this. Maybe they're keeping quiet because they don't want to piss off their donors. I suspect there are a number of libertarians that, that the whole of the Mises Institute is like this, uh, that is basically not so much pro-Putin, but anti-American and blaming America for every problem that exists out there. Um, you know, the, I know that the Independent Institute was like this. All of these people, right? I mean, I, I know after 9-11... The number of libertarians that came after me, came after anybody who tried to defend America, anybody who tried to say that this was not our fault, that this is an ideological battle. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of libertarian intellectuals who advocate for this position. It's not some fringe minority within the libertarian movement. I mean, I wish it was. And then, of course, there's Tucker Carlson. So it's not just libertarians. It's, it's, it's conservatives as well. And you can see them all over Twitter defending Russia. Every time you post something about Russia, defending Russia, party line propaganda out of Russia. Putin is their hero. They love Putin. And then there's Jordan Peterson. I mean, it's, it's a wide swath of American populace that is bought into multiculturalism. And yet, they hate the left. And yet, they are the left. Collectivism, subjectivism. It doesn't matter if it's left or right. They're all the same. Yeah, I mean, you've got, even got Peter Hitchens in, um, in the UK. I mean, you, you, you can imagine Christopher Hitchens rolling in his grave, swagging his finger at, uh, at, at his brother. No, this is not a fringe view that blames America for 9-11 and blames America for what's happening in Russia or what's happening in Ukraine, that blames America for all the problems in the world. Not a fringe view. So is America exceptional? Yes. Certainly in its founding, still is a pretty damn good place to live. Could be a lot better. There's a lot of work to make it better. But to make it better, 
we have to first realize what its virtues are. And we have to realize how much better it is than much of the rest of the world. And we have to be willing to fight from that basis. Not start with how awful it is, how bad it is, and how the same it is with everybody else. Because then we're not being objective and we really have no clue what we're fighting for. I'm not fighting for anarchy. I don't want to fight for subjectivism. I don't want to fight for any form of collectivism. So, they hate America because they reject objectivity. They hate America because they refuse to have actual standards. They hate America because they view everything as the same, because fundamentally they are moral egalitarians. They believe everything is the same. As long as it's willed, as long as it's somebody's desire, it's fine. Who are you to judge somebody else's desire? Who are you to judge somebody else's culture? Even if that culture oppresses the individual. Since when is the individual the standard? It's shocking how many people out there who you would think are individualists land up being collectivists. If you dig just a little bit deeper. America is a good country because at its foundation are great ideas. And those ideas that need to be fought for. And those ideas that need to be recognized for their greatness and fought for. Travis, thank you for the support. Really appreciate it. Without a question. So that's why I singled him out. Thanks, Travis. And if you put them all together, if they're all ideas are the same, egalitarianism when it comes to ideas, yeah, you lose the plot. If you think Islamism is the equivalent of Americanism, if you think the Muslims attacked us because we pissed them off rather than attacking us because of our ideas and because of their ideas, you don't know what you're talking about. Of course, you can blame the US for making mistakes, like funding the Mujahideen in Afghanistan, or being sympathetic to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, as the Obama administration was. There are lots of things you can criticize America. But then the criticism has to be from the perspective of freedom, from the perspective of liberty, and from the perspective of individualism. And the criticism needs to be from the perspective of what is morally good and what is morally right, what is morally just. It's not from the perspective of, oh, those poor, poor Putin. It's just trying to defend his people. That cannot be the right perspective. Yeah, to this day, America is defending Qatar. Qatar, that is one of the biggest funders of ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the rest of them, right? Yet, we protect Qatar, we protect the UAE, we protect Saudi Arabia. America is weak in its foreign policy. It's not judgmental enough in its foreign policy. It's too accommodating to the bad guys out there in the world. The problem is not that America is too assertive, that it's not assertive enough. It doesn't differentiate enough between the good guys and the bad guys. And that they're willing to tolerate and to sanction some pretty bad and evil regimes, including Russia's. We should have called Putin Years ago, in 2008, when he invaded Georgia for no reason. In 2014, when he invaded Ukraine. I mean, Putin should have been called out long ago when he poisoned Russian dissidents on, wet, on other countries' soil. That's when we should have called him out, not waited until he got so bold as to launch a full-blown war against his neighbor. So the thing we need to really beware of 
in the world, in our lives, in the people around us, in our political allies, or so-called allies, is moral subjectivism and moral egalitarianism. Judge and be ready to be judged. Have standards. Be willing to declare the good. Realize that maybe the good is flawed, but it's better than the evil. Be willing to call evil, evil. People just, yeah. Anyway, so subjectivism is the enemy here. Uh, and and it's, it's left and right. It unites them. Uh, you know, remember Dugan? You remember the, the show I did on Dugan? And, um, you know, he comes out as being pro-postmodernism. There's no difference between today the left and the right in its different variations. They're both collectivists and they're both subjectivists. And they're both mystical. It's just the mysticism is, um, you know, tinged differently, left and right. The left worships Mother Earth, and the right worships a Judeo-Christian God. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.